there home cooks, today I'm going to be making chow mein. But rather than using traditional noodles, I'll be making these with a guilty pleasure of mine, the instant ramen noodle. It's been popularized here as a money-saving student meal, often utilizing a basic flavoring pack provided. It's actually a really good noodle option, and when made with some simple ingredients and a delicious source of Asian flavors, the result is a proper, healthy and delicious dish, leaving everyone none the wiser. Which reminds me of a little tip I have for making Asian dishes at home. I have all my Asian sauces and flavorings stored in one box in my pantry. Very often these dishes require very similar combinations of ingredients, and I find it very useful to take them all out together and have them ready to go. Worth considering if you cook a lot of teriyaki or stir fry like me. But now let's get started on our chow mein. The key to a good chow mein for me is thinly slicing everything, so everything feels uniform when eating. Make sure you have a sharp knife to begin with and we can start our prep. First up is spring onion, where I'm separating the green tops from the whites. The tops will be for garnishing and the whites provide the flavor. Slice them as thinly as you can and they will melt and combine nicely when cooked. Next up is my favorite, the bell pepper. Chop off the top and slice down from the bottom to remove the core. Then tidy up any whites left over and slice lengthways very thinly. With the pepper done, we move on to the last veg to be cooked, the carrot. I recently got a julienne attachment for my mandolin, so I thought, whoop, <clears throat> let's pretend no one saw that. Anyway, I thought the carrot would make a good candidate to test this out. Admittedly, the length of the carrot makes this a bit tricky. I definitely should have cut it in half. But overall, a pretty decent result, if a bit on the long side. I wonder if I can snap them in half in one go. Hey, that worked pretty well. Last but not least, some lettuce. This is not your traditional chow mein ingredient, but I much prefer the green and crunch to come from lettuce over bean sprouts, which is more common. It's very much up to your preference, but I'd recommend giving lettuce a go and see what you make of it. To get thinly sliced lettuce, roll the leaves up into a large cigar and then enjoy the wonderfully satisfying slicing sensation you feel as you get into the groove. There, perfectly sliced lettuce guaranteed. So, with the veg now prepped, it's on to our chow mein sauce. Now, there isn't one perfect recipe for this, but I quite like Joshua Weisbrot's, which consists of one and a half tablespoons rice vinegar, two and a half tablespoons soy sauce, I use dark, two tablespoons hoisin sauce, and one teaspoon of sesame oil. Mix that all together, and the last thing I do is mince in some garlic. This will cook off just enough of the rawness, but leave your noodles deliciously garlicky. And the final bit of prep is our guest of honor, the noodles. Remove them from their packaging, and then in a large, get that out of here, and place in a large bowl. The beauty of these is you don't need to get the hop going, bring it to a boil, and keep it simmering. Just let them sit in boiling water for three or four minutes, and they are done. After three minutes, drain them off, and be sure to rinse under cold water so they don't go mushy. Right, everything is prepped, let's cook. Grab a deep-sided pan, or wok is best, and get it nice and hot before adding a splash of sesame oil. Then drop in the carrots, pepper, and spring onion, and cook for five or six minutes or until we start to see some charring. It's best to give everything a few tosses to allow everything to make contact with the pan. Next, we can add in the noodles, and be sure to toss a few times again so that all the veg is getting mixed in properly. Follow that up by pouring in our sauce along the sides and get everything really well coated. Yep, you should probably throw in a few more tosses for good measure. Once you're happy, all the ingredients are mixed together. Kill the heat, and we can now add the lettuce at the end. This way it doesn't wilt away as it would during the cooking process. One more toss for luck, and chow mein we have. I'm going to add a touch more soy sauce, as I'm a big fan of the umami flavor it brings. And now we're on to the best bit. Time to plate up. Let's begin with a fancier option. We are elevating instant noodles after all. I've tried a nest in the center of the plate with some grated carrot mounds either side, which would also work as a palate cleanser. Then I've thinly sliced vertically some of those spring onion tops from before and dunked them in cold water to curl and crisp up. I surprisingly really like this. It adds height to the dish, but also a really cool pattern to catch the eye. For an individual portion, I'm using a dark bowl and then adding some toasted sesame seeds. They add a little texture, but mostly it's the aroma I love. 
then a classic sprinkling of green onion, and it's a wonderful meal to enjoy on the couch with a good film. Chopsticks are optional, but they grip the noodles so well, if you can use them, use them, I say. And finally, how they are probably best served. Family style in a big old bowl. Grab a large spoon and help yourself. And there you have it. How to turn boring instant noodles into a fantastic, vibrant Xiaomi. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? And be sure to subscribe so you can see more videos like this. Until then, get cooking and may the Zen be with you. How close can I get to the edge? Oh, too much. <laughs>